Welcome to another DCS tutorial. This time we'll be covering seed missions over two separate videos. This first video will focus on the Harrier and the sidearm and how we can attack SAMs from low level and SA-10s from long range. The follow-up video will be applicable to other airframes and I will cover different weapons which we can employ against a wide array of Red 4 air defences, including how to attack defences in depth. Okay, we're on board. Um, first of all, we're going to attack an SA-10 using sidearm at relatively close range. After that, we will show how we can attack them from long range. This first attack is probably how most pilots use sidearm and it's going to fail. I've set up the SA-10 clamshell radar ahead of us and we should be getting a lock at just under 11 miles. There's the lock and Magnum. Let's take a little pause here and explain why this is going to miss. As the sidearm already has a lock, as soon as it comes off the rail, it's going to head straight towards the target. That might be okay when flying across water or a flat desert, but not when flying across undulating terrain with trees, which is what we have here. This wouldn't be an issue at higher altitude, but if we were higher, it would have been blown out of the sky 15 miles back. So let's unpause and watch what happens. Hopefully we saw that the missile, which was pointing upwards, immediately tracked onto target upon leaving the rail. As predicted, the missile is heading straight into some trees. Barely making it over those. And it's taken out a nice pine. So let's try this again. This time we're not going to wait for a lock, which means that we can launch from significantly further away. And indeed, this becomes easier the further away you are, within the ballistic limits of the missile, of course. Pull up, pull up. So at this altitude, we're good for almost 20 miles, but we're going to launch at around 14 or 15 miles to make sure we have ample energy. Let's prep our weapons with master arm on and air to ground master mode, but we're not going to select our weapon as we don't want our sidearm to accidentally get a lock onto our target or any other target. Okay, we're approaching our launch range, so we're going to pitch up to just under 5 degrees, arm the weapon, and magnum. So the missile's away, and we're just going to have another little pause. So this time what's going to happen is that the missile will fly upwards in an almost straight line until it starts to lose energy or is in range of the target at just under 11 miles, by which time it will hopefully gain sufficient altitude to clear those trees. The field of view for the seeker is quite narrow though, around 10 degrees off boresight. So if we were to pitch up to 10 degrees or more and launch, by the time it's flown forward 5 miles, that 10 degrees will have increased and be outside of the seeker head's field of view and will overfly the target. Caution, caution. 
That's 1,500 feet. Caution, caution. 2,000 feet. And there is the lock at 2,200 feet, if you notice the slight change in direction just then. The missile seems to have a clear line of sight now, and hopefully we'll get a kill, but let's speed things up a little bit. Even with the loft, those trees coming into view might still cause us a problem. We just about scrape past them. Shack. Let's now look at trying to attack an SA-10 from long range and high altitude. This is a surprising capability for the sidearm, especially if you thought it only had a 10 mile range, which many people do. And this time we're going to be attacking an operational site. But first, let's have a quick look at some actual real-world SA-10 sites. This first site in Iran consists of the flap lid tracking radar, the Big Bird search radar and four launchers, whilst this site in Sevastopol has a newer version of a flap lid and has the clamshell search radar but only two launchers. In game, we also have to have the C2 command center, and we'll also need the flap lid tracking radar, either or both of the such radars, and at least one launcher. This is what we're going to face in this demo. We have both such radars, the tracking radar, three launchers, and we also have some supply trucks which will rearm the launchers after a few minutes. Unlike HARM, we can't filter on radar types, so we can't control what target we will actually hit. Ideally, we'd take out the tracking radar, leaving the site completely inoperable. But that's not likely, as things will have probably gone wrong if the tracking radar is emitting. More likely, is a hit on either the Big Bird search radar, which would leave the site extremely vulnerable to a follow-up attack, or possibly the clamshell low level radar, which will only have a marginal impact, but that depends on the terrain. We're back on board, and you can see that we have an unusual loadout. We have four sidearms fitted, we have the T-Pod on the wing, the jamming pod on the center line, and also a single fuel tank. The jammer's needed for obvious reasons. The T-Pod is there to give us accurate range information to the target, and the tank is needed to get us as high and as fast as possible. First of all, we're going to dump the tank so we can accelerate to attack speed. Put the gunner in to accelerate to attack speed. And then we're going to turn master arm on and get into air to ground master mode nice and early. So let's bring up the teapot now. And we'll go to T-Pod Hortas mode. And then IR mode. And I know the summer site is near to waypoint 1. So I'm going to waypoint designate with OSB 1. 
and then we'll find the targets using the TDC zoom and field of view as required. And finally, TDC action. We're now going to set that as a target of opportunity and then we'll set our EHSD to that location. Right on cue, the flap lid is trying to get a lock and we want to let that happen. But as soon as he launches, we're going to turn on our jammer and try and jump the missile. As soon as we turned on the jammer, it killed the lock at this range and jumped the missile. But we're now going to leave the jammer on and arm our sidearm and uncage it. So, we've jumped one missile, we're going to force another launch at us and that will mean that the site only has 10 remaining missiles to take out four sidearm. <laughs> He's burned through our jammer and launched another missile at 30 miles and we're still just out of range. So let's get a little closer. And Magnum. Let's have a quick pause there. That uh, first missile left the rail at 28.5 miles, which is right on the limit of range at this speed and altitude, and will probably drop short, but not before it's picked up by the SA-10 and at least two missiles are launched in. We really need to be under 28 miles here and we could continue down to 26 miles but we start getting into real danger of being hit ourselves. So I'm going to release the next salvos with about one and a half to two seconds delay. That's all for away and we're going to turn hard and dive down to low level to force that missile back down into the thicker air. We're not going to try and notch or evade, we are just literally running away. The closer you launch from, the more aggressive you need to be here. I got down to 27.4 miles before the last missile, so I'm not too worried. So I'm just going to dive down to around 10,000 before gently pulling out. And I should be perfectly safe now. You can see my sidearms are inbound and already they've been detected and there are at least seven SA-10s inbound to intercept them. Two sidearms have been intercepted. And now a third. We know that two SA-10s came after me. There was an initial salvo of eight fired at the sidearms and at least one which terminated at launch. So that's 11. And there must have been another which also terminated on launch. So we know that the battery had 12 missiles and now it's effectively defenseless and our sidearms will be inside minimum range long before any reloading is possible. The energy levels are looking good. When the missile gets under around 350 knots, it normally starts to fall out of the sky. And 
one shack. We can be confident that we can get four sidearms past six SA-10s with two fired at the Harrier. But in the previous demo, we were quite fortunate to get past 10 missiles. But if there were three or more launchers, you can improve the odds by getting more missiles fired at us fairly quickly. However, it is significantly riskier. We're back on board for the final time and we're already set up and approaching the SA-10's launch zone. Once again, we're going to let them fire on us, but this time we're going to break 90 degrees to try and notch the missile. By notching, what we're doing is reducing the radial velocity to as close to zero as we can and hopefully the Doppler filter on the radar will filter out our radar returns, breaking the lock. Okay, it's still tracking, so we're going to gently turn in to try and get the radar at our three o'clock. Once in the filter, it will take a few seconds to break lock, and it's a fairly narrow window, so you need to take it easy and keep calm. That's the track broken and two missiles expended. So we're going to roll in again, get a little bit closer and try and provoke him to fire another couple of missiles. If we can get him down to 8 missiles then we probably have a 90% plus chance of getting a kill. I'm not flying straight towards him as I want to give him plenty of time to lock and launch but I need to be mindful of the fact that I'm only at 20,000 feet so the range of my missile is lower. He's got another lock so I'm going to try and notch him once again. and I'm down to 24 miles, so it might be a little bit more difficult. We should be pretty close for notch now, so we just need a little bit of patience. We're still not broken a lock, so I'm gonna start kicking out a little bit of chaff. dump a few more chaff. And finally we've broken the lock. So let's arm our sidearms and return the favour. and Magnum. And we'll break away again. Let's just watch as he tries to defend himself. to be the entire battery expended.
once again he's picking off the side arms and once again we have one that's broken through Turns out that I needn't have bothered attacking the site as the desert rats are here. But if you learned anything new, please do hit like and subscribe to the channel. And remember, part two of this video will be coming soon. In the meanwhile, I wonder if I can thumb a lift.